purpose of this video is to provide the user a step-by-step -step guide to using the Sinkhole Extraction Tool. The Sinkhole Extraction Tool was developed by EDAC, the Earth Data Analysis Center, at the University of New Mexico for Transet, the Transportation Consortium of the South Central States. The tool is developed to help the user extract potential sinkhole information from the everly increasing available LiDAR data. It was developed as a Python script in the Esri ArcMap environment, optimized actually for the Esri ArcMap 10.5, but it does work in ArcMap 10.4 and ArcPro. It works with LiDAR files, uh, specifically LiDAR files that are of the last one point, version 1.4. It also works with uh, Bare Earth DEM tiles that correspond to the LiDAR tiles. Now they are not necessary. We have two different uh, tool sets for this toolbox. The first uh, tool set actually creates the DEM. So if you do not have DEMs available, we do have an option to create the DEMs. But if you already have a DEM tiles available and are in a separate directory, uh, you can go on to the second uh, tools box. The DEM tiles and the LiDAR tiles should have the same prefix names. You can download the tool from our GitHub uh, site at, at EDAC, shown here. Once you have downloaded it and uncompressed the, the file, you can then take the Python script and add it to the Arc Toolbox by clicking, right-clicking and holding on the Arc Toolbox uh, logo and then selecting Add the to Toolbox option. You can see how it will look in the bottom right here. The sinkhole mapper uh, Python tool is shown here. Once you've added the toolbox, you will find it added to your whole list of other tools here. You can see it right here, the sinkhole toolbox, with its two different uh, uh, tool sets here, the DEM creator and the sinkhole extractor. Again, the DEM creator is for those who do not have a actual uh, bare earth DEM tiles already created. This will create for you the, the DEM tiles. If you already do have the DEM tiles, which is normal for most of these LiDAR projects, then you can go directly to the sinkhole extractor. Now, before you move on, you need to make sure that you go to the Customize tab on the top of your arc map uh, box and turn on the Spatial Analyst and 3D extensions. So first we'll cover the optional DEM Creator tool. Again, use this tool if you do not already have individual DEM tiles. It will derive the bare earth DEM from LiDAR point cloud data. First several options in the DEM creator it are pointers towards where number one, where the last tile directory is located, where you want the output uh, DEM tile directory to be created, and what the output raster projection should be. Now the one point about the last bit, the output raster projection. This is as defined by the metadata found with the last data set or other uh, information you may find with the last data set. This is not a reprojection tool. So it needs to, the output raster projection is defined as the actual projection that the last data was create, uh, collected in. Next options allow the user the options of picking how to define what values, elevation values, are used within each cell of the uh, DEM tiles. Now we have selected uh, the option of the minimum, so we'll go through each cell and look at all the different LiDAR pulses that hit within that cell, and in this case it will use the minimum elevation value it finds and puts that there as the value of the cell. But you also have options to use either the maximum value, the average value, or the inverse distance weighted value. Again, for the purpose of using a bare earth uh, DEM, it's highly advised to use just the minimum value. Also, there are potential possibilities that uh, you will have cells that will have no lighter pulses found in them. So the next option here provides a way to uh, deal with that case. 
in this case we have checked as our default value to have use a linear uh, interpolation method to fill in any voids that, that do not have any cells that do not have any uh, LIDAR pulse values. So it will do a linear interpolation to figure out uh, what elevation value should be put in those voids there. But there are other options such as the simple or natural neighbor value or just to do nothing at all. Again, we would highly suggest just using the default values here. The last option is to find on how the output will be created. Uh, you can choose floating or integer. Uh, the integer will make a smaller file, but it will truncate the output value to the nearest whole number. So in the case of a UTM base file that's in with elevations in meters, the, you will have just single values of meters as your output elevation. If you have state plane and the output uh, elevation data set is in feet, it will be in values of feet. But if you have it as a floating point, then it will have a point uh, meters, you know, like 1.5, 1.3, or same thing with feet. So it preserves a lot more of the detail that's inherent in the, the last information. Also, you can define the output cell size. Again, this should be found within the metadata or some other parts of the output uh, project information for the last acquisition. Um, and so the output uh, cell size is in map di distance units. If, say, this is a UTM uh, type of a uh, project, then the map distance units may be m meters. And therefore, if you put a cell size of one, that means each cell of the output to DEM will be one meter each. And it's a state plane, and the um, distance units are in feet. Then if you have a value of one in the cell size, that means each cell output cell size will be one foot. Finally, we have a ability for the user to define the Z factor. Generally, this will always be kept as one. But if for some reason you have a need to change the output elevation value, again, this is not distance values, but elevation value from uh, into another distance or another elevation unit, then uh, you can uh, put a multiplier effect to, to change that. So if this was a UTM projected uh, last file and you're creating a DEM and the output will be in meters but you want elevation values in feet you can put a multiplier in here of a 3.2814 if you want or vice versa you can uh, change a state plane feet and you, if you want the output elevation file, files to be in meters you can put the appropriate multiplier. Again. We would highly suggest just keep the pre-selected options unless you have another idea as to how you want to do this. Next we'll go to the second tool, and this is the tool that everyone would use to, to actually extract the features, the single features found in the LiDAR data. The first set of options are again like the previous uh, tool to define where the last tile directory is, where the DEM tile directory is, and what the output raster projection should be. And again, this is a raster projection as defined by the last metadata or in some of the output uh, project information. This is not a reprojection tool. Second set of options. First, we give you a uh, extract mask option. This allows the user to create a sub shape file to define a smaller area that you want to actually look at um, sinkholes in. Say like you know that there's only of all the larger last uh, project area, lighter pro project area that was acquired, that there is only a small area where you have sinkhole activity that you're worried about. Maybe thanks to uh, ge geology that you may have for that or some other defining metric. You can create a shapefile and the shapefile will then exclude all the other last files and just look at the last files that are within the, the shapefile. This will save a lot on processing time as well as a lot of false positives in areas that you're not worried about. The bit depth will assign the level of vertical detail that will be looked at. 32-bit uh, signed option will make it for a smaller file but will truncate 
to the, the nearest whole number, which may decrease the amount of detail that's available. The 32-bit float and 64-bit will create more detailed files, but also bigger files to have to move around with. The spectral and spatial detail options determine the level of detail for the image process or image segmentation process. Uh, this is part of the process that actually creates the extracts the actual uh, sinkhole objects. Uh, values in this for the spectral and spatial detail approaching one will give less detail. Values approaching twenty will give more detail. This is a prime area to dither with in case you're finding that you're not getting enough sinkholes or you're getting way too much uh, data on the other side. So you can dither with these things to uh, change kind of the output. The minimum segment size also determines what the final output cells with the minimum size they will be. In this case, uh, we have a, a default as being 20 cells. Anything smaller than 20 cells will not be looked at for a sinkhole. Anything greater than that will, will be kept. But again, if you're finding that you're maybe not getting as much detail as you want, you can change this and decrease this or increase it if you want to. The minimum area and maximum area option determine what the, the final polygon size should be. These are in square map distance units. Again, this is to, to reduce the amount of uh, clutter, big clutter or small clutter you may have in there. So we have it set here again in 100 and uh, a million there. Um, if you find that uh, you need more detailed data, you could change the minimum size. Or if you're finding that you're getting too much uh, big data sets in there, you can change the maximum size. Again, this is all according to your needs here. Overall, though, we would suggest just use the pre-selected options until you know if you want to change some more of the details here. In the end, this tool will create um, a sinkhole geodatabase. And inside the sinkhole geodatabase, you will find the sinkhole polygons feature class, as seen here. There's also a few other data sets that are created here. The sinkhole polygons uh, feature class is the one that has the final product, but if you're finding that maybe you're not getting enough information coming through there, maybe there are a few more polygons, you can look at some of these other data sets to, to determine if maybe the, our filtering process is taking out too many of the extraneous noise. So you can take a look at those. Also, as part of the process, we have created a DEM mosaic. We preserved the DEM mosaic here in case you would like to use this in the future to for other projects. And that's the end of the demonstration here. Again, we would like to thank uh, Transet for providing the funding for this. And on the back, you see an example of some of the, the polygons in blue of the sinkholes that were derived from this sinkhole extraction tool. Thank you.